Crow Coven and welcome back to our channel. This is Nyx from Crowmates Apothecary and in today's video we're going to be looking at your potential love connections in 2024. So this could be a new love connection, a look into your current relationship, or even possibly something more platonic such as new friendships that are coming into your life. But before we get into the reading, and if you're new, remember to like the video, hit the subscribe button, and leave a comment to let us know that you've joined the Crow Coven as well as to appease the algorithm gods. And if you'd like to go the extra mile, feel free to share this video with a friend. You can also support our channel more directly by checking out our website at crowmatesapothecary.com where we create homemade all-natural self-care products. And our next drop is actually going to be on February 1st where we're going to be stocking our Aphrodite self-care line, which is all going to be rose and vanilla scented products. Crowmatesapothecary.com is also the only place where you can book a private tarot reading with me. So if I have ever really deeply resonated with you as a reader or you are just interested in possibly getting a reading done, remember to check that out. Just know that whichever way you choose to support, I want to thank you guys for watching this video. And now let us get into the intro of the cards. Starting on the far left side, we have the pink paint tarot and this yellow adventuring that's going to be representing group number one. Then we have the pastel journey along with this rose quartz representing group number two. Then we have the okay tarot along with this how light representing group number three. And lastly, we have the Kauai Tarot, along with this Sunstone, representing group number four. So if you need to, feel free to pause the video and meditate on the decks that I have set out in front of you. And when you've made your decision, head on down to the description box below and then click on the timestamp that corresponds with the group that you chose. And now, without further ado, let's head into your reading. Hello group number one and welcome to your reading all about your potential love story of 2024. So before I get um, really deep into this reading, I just wanted to first thank you all for clicking on this video, but also I wanted to remind you all to um, fire up your notes app or pull out a piece of paper and a pencil so you can take down notes for yourself. I would love for you all to really write down the messages that deeply resonate with you so you aren't having to like go back to the video and be like, wait, what happened? Hold on. <laughs> so I just wanted to remind everyone. Also, remember to hydrate. I actually have my water in here as well with me. So if you see me taking a couple of sips off of that, it's because talking a lot sometimes means that we need to hydrate ourselves. So let's get started with the reading for today. So you chose the pink paint tarot along with this yellow adventure. And I'm going to show it to you guys once more. And this is a really amazing gemstone when it comes to wanting to work through and alleviate grief within yourself, going through and centering your emotions, sort of rehealing from perhaps past love trauma that you've been through in order to open up the door for something new for yourself. It can also help in really allowing you to focus your manifestations and being able to resolve that within yourself in the sense of like your your mindset right now could possibly be one of Maybe feeling a little bit more negative when it comes to your love story. Maybe you're someone who doesn't believe that it's for you or you haven't found the right person that's gelled with you. And this is really here to kind of help guide you through that. So let's go ahead and get into your reading for today. Please, dear, can we help group number one? with figuring out what they're going to be experiencing in 2024. What love are they going to attract to them? I'm going to pull out a few cards because I'm really feeling it right now. Okay. So, we'll get to this one <laughs> in a second. The fact that it came out reversed is really well not reversed up uh, like uh flipped over is giving me this feeling that this is probably a bigger theme for you to be paying attention to um and the fact that it's reversed 
make makes sense obviously with with this and i will go into that so starting on this card here we are seeing the three of pentacles so we're seeing that maybe you're in a mindset where you are wanting to work something out with someone maybe you actually are in a relationship right now and it's not quite feeling like an equal partnership because we're seeing in the three of pentacles it's this want to be fulfilled when it comes to collaboration you want teamwork you want to be able to learn and grow with someone or something so this could be indicative of a want to grow within a current relationship um grow within yourself or maybe understand and heal to grow for the next person. As we're seeing here, I'm getting that like healing vibe from we have this little bottle here with the stereotypical like medical cross on it sort of thing, sort of thing. So that gives me that feeling of wanting to heal, wanting to grow as we see the plants that are growing from the skull in this card as well. Let's continue. Ooh, the star. So Perhaps you or someone you're interested in is an Aquarius. Um, the star all talks about hope and talks about this almost like refreshing newness within yourself where you are starting to, you're starting to shift that mindset. You're starting to feel more of a higher version of yourself wanting to come out and wanting to experience the world around you. With the star, we have, again, the sense of renewal where it feels like, to me, you're trying to be a little bit more hopeful about your love story or in general, just more hopeful and optimistic about life. Perhaps this is something that's fairly new to you or maybe you go through certain patterns where um, they're almost cyclical, where it's like you feel very hopeful and very excited. And then if something bad happens, you kind of like fall off the wagon and you go into like a depression and then you come back up to that positive again. And it kind of feels like a repeat pattern. Not to say that you're not allowed to feel positive or allowed to feel this inspiration, feel this this hope and newness, but just to make sure that you dig into what that means and where that's coming from instead of ignoring it. And the reason why I'm harping on you when it comes to that is we are seeing with this Ace of Cups reversed, the fact that this one came out, um, flipped over, did give me this feeling of this is an important thing for you to focus on. And it's an important thing for you to work through is because the Ace of Cups reverse talks about either blocked or repressed emotions. So you are maybe someone who bottles things up until you sort of like overflow or you explode. Um, maybe you don't let people in. And because of that, it can really confuse the people around you because they think you are one thing because of how you're showing love to them and then suddenly out of nowhere you have this moment where you're like pushed over the edge and you you react in a way that is completely opposite from how you were showing them and then that makes them take a step back because they're like wait a minute like why are they acting like this now like you come across possibly as very cold to them and they're like wait where did all that loving and warmth go and you were like just trying to protect yourself and when that happens um it pushes those people away and then you when you start feeling good again and you start approaching them in a more like positive and warm way again they're like wait a minute like are you gonna do this again like what's happening um that's a message for some for others this could be what you're going through that maybe someone is reacting in this way to you but the fact that this flew out when I was pulling for you in, in particular, it really makes me feel like that this is something that you have to take a deeper look at because I feel like there's something that's stopping you from really making long-lasting, deep love connections because 
there's something that you're dealing with mentally, how we're seeing here in the star, this like pink above the figure's head in here. It gives me this feeling like there's something mentally that's like looming over you that you try your hardest to push away, but until you dig deep down and really experience it and figure it out, it's going to keep you in this cycle. Lastly, we're seeing the Empress though, but this is such a positive outlook on it because the Empress is someone who really knows herself. Um, the Empress is the very standard structure of beauty and abundance. Someone who is very knowing of herself and what she wants. The Empress is also very in touch with her, obviously, like her feminine side, but in the way of in touch with her emotions and she's able to understand where she's coming from with things like this. So this could be a sign that you are taking those steps and you know that you need to be balanced. How we're seeing on the figure's arm here with this tattoo, we have the yin and yang symbols there. So showing the balance between the light and the dark and being able to recognize that within yourself and being able to be at peace and be whole with those selves. So this is giving me an overall positive feeling that you are going to be persevering through whatever you deem as an issue within yourself, whatever is possibly stopping you from making deeper connections. I see that you recognize that and you're not letting it control you this year. That's the feeling that I'm getting from this card is you are kind of stepping up into a version of your higher self and you're taking control of this situation. Um, the other feeling that I'm getting from the Empress is just so, just to like make it clear that if you are not female or female like presenting in any way, this could be something where you are getting more in touch with just your emotions in general. So it could be just you conquering. Obviously, this works for any gender, but this is you essentially tapping into your emotions and conquering the emotions that we're seeing here in these repressed and blocked emotions in the Ace of Cups reversed. I want to pull a few more cards for you guys. I feel like there's a couple more messages in the pink pane that I want to get. So can we kind of talk further about what love? Because this was kind of more like, this almost felt like a, a love within yourself situation. So I want to talk about a love between you and another, whether this is friendship, something platonic or something with family or even a love connection of some form, a more romantic connection. Please, Spirit, can I pull a few cards related to this? We have the Five of Cups coming out. Ten of Swords in the reverse position. And the Hanged Man in the reverse position. So we're seeing a lot of major arcana here, actually. Oops, sorry, some of my cards just fell. Um, we're seeing a lot of major arcana here with, obviously, the Star, the Empress, and the Hanged Man. We have with the Five of Cups, this does talk about um, some sort of loss or disappointment. There's a possibility that you put yourself out there in a certain instance and it doesn't quite go somewhere that you want it to go. It almost feels like the biggest feeling I'm getting from this is more of a friendship situation. I always equate like the multiple like cups that we're seeing here as some sort of like connection with multiple because the two of cups is like love and partnership together three is about celebration with friends and then the more cups that appear to me gives me this feeling of like friend group sort of thing so this almost feels like there's 
something more recently that you kind of had to grieve. Maybe there's like a breakup in your friend group or something happened where you, because of this past stuff, it feels like you're kind of the odd one out and you're trying to figure out how to f work that back together. You're trying to, you're trying to fit yourself back into that friend group. Whether that's a good or a bad thing is up to you. It could be that maybe you have felt better away from these people because maybe it just really has helped your mental growth and health to be away from them. Or maybe you've been missing them and you've been missing this connection and you're just like, I don't know how to like break through and reach out to them other than what I've done in the past. So really determine what works for you in this instance because we're seeing that this is indicative of some sort of loss or like a disappointment so I'm not sure if this is something that you've already been through in 2023 and you're just sitting there like well how do I fix it or if this is something that you're actively pursuing and it's still not really going anywhere it's going to be different depending on your situation and what all works for you. But next in the Ten of Swords reverse, this does bring up something more, almost more um, positive in the sense that this card talks about really going through some sort of recovery. You're regenerating. A lot of it has to do with the mental. Obviously, the swords are all pointed at the head, particularly the top and around the head. So it really deals with your mental state, healing from that. Maybe you went through a really turbulent time in 2023 and coming into 2024, you're far more hopeful and it's kind of pulling you away from that. And this is showing sort of that change in pace and how you are finally able to move on and recover. Especially when we were talking about with the yellow adventuring, this is you overcoming that past grief, really centering your emotions and working through those situations. We're seeing progress. So we're seeing a goodness come from this. In the Hanged Man reversed, we have this feeling of almost like you can't really decide quite what you want to do. You're just not fully sure of yourself or fully sure of what it is that you want. So again, if this is talking a lot about where you stand with other people in the sense of friendships, it could very much mean that you're sitting there on the outside just like, hey, I don't know like what I want to do about this. I don't know what is going to be best for me or if I felt better without people, things like that. So really looking inside yourself and going, kind of going through a list of the pros and the cons and then taking solid steps. Maybe even having a conversation with whoever is in this Five of Cups. Maybe starting a conversation out going, hey, I know things are weird or were weird between us, but I really value our friendship or what we used to have and I want to get back to that point. What is it that I can do to show you that I'm serious about this? And just ask them and see how they respond because if they respond in like a more positive way like yeah like I've missed you too obviously like I I don't want it to be weird either there's your foot in the door and you can keep on with that conversation because it isn't like a, a flip switches and you're like everything's perfect <laughs> you have to kind of put in the work just like again you I feel that you deeply want some sort of you want this to work out, but it's just, you're kind of in this like stuck mode. The other thing I wanted to point out to how I pointed out in the star being Aquarius, we have the Empress here who is represented by Aries. And then also we have um, the Hanged Man, which is represented by Pisces. Sorry, I had to get a drink of water. 
Okay, <laughs> so let's continue. Um, I really am getting this feeling that your focus in 2024 is more leaning toward friendships and repairing those friendships with within yourself and within that group that you want to be a part of. So let's go ahead and pull a few more cards. I'm going to pull two of these kind of to give us a feeling of either you and your representation or perhaps the people in your life. First one we're seeing is the quail and gooseberry, which says anticipation. So you're sitting there thinking and wondering and hoping. You're stuck in that anticipation phase of wanting to know what comes next, if it's worth it, um, and perhaps like maybe you even sent a message or you're planning on sending a message after this video and you're like, okay, now I have to wait and see. It's, it's definitely you playing the sort of waiting game. And then next we have, hold on, let me just pull this one. This one, ooh, the snake and fern, which says starting over. So maybe treating this almost as a point of you like releasing what has happened in the past and starting fresh. For those of you who do want to see this as more of a um, romantic connection or perhaps a friendship that would lead to romance pipeline, um, it gives me this feeling like you are still struggling through it. You are still uncertain of what would be the best route for you to take, but you're feeling very, very hopeful. I see you as embodying this, this raw power of you being able to conquer your emotions and conquer your headspace that you're in to start taking these new steps and to start over. Um, so again, whether this is more of a platonic situation or a romantic one, I do see you currently on the path of success. So just keep feeding that self-love into yourself of healing, of being really courageous. So even if you're afraid to send a message or afraid of like what they might think or say, you're not going to know until you reach out to them. So yes, we have to sit in this anticipation phase, which can sometimes really, really suck <laughs> when, you, when you have to sit there and be like, oh God, what are they going to do? What are they going to say? Um, but starting fresh with people is the mindset that you should take in this instance. It's this feeling of um, instead of the snake symbolizing like an Ouroboros where it's the snake eating its own tail and it's just that like uh I'm hissing like a snake it's not that <laughs> um that pattern of repeating um like cyclical that's what I was trying to say instead of that cyclical pattern of doing the same thing over and over again the snake is sort of un it's it's tangled in this fern but it's sort of untangled from self-destructing behaviors and it's it's instead starting over. I'm literally not trying to like snake hiss through that entire <laughs> sentence, but there's a lot of S's. So let's go ahead and get through some more messages. What do I want to start with? I think I want to pull some crystal messages. Maybe snakes are really important to you. The fact that that was like so hard. <laughs> I don't know. I love snakes. So this is one of those things where maybe you have a snake tattoo or you just like love reptiles. Something to do with snakes or is really coming through to me for some reason. I'm going to go ahead and pull, I think, two of these cards and I will be reading them along with the, the guidebook because I actually just got this deck recently. So I'm still learning them. Let's pull a couple of cards for group one. Spirit, can we get some messages for group one? The first one, this is so pretty. The first one that we're seeing is the Tourmalated Quartz and it says, get out of your own way. Wow. So yeah, kind of like what I was talking about before is that you're almost, you have to kind of stand up for yourself and against yourself and against how you felt and done in the past is that immediate feeling that I'm getting where you have to push past like your paranoia and push past 
the self-sabotaging. Sorry to call you out if I am. <laughs> I get that way too, so don't worry. I'm, I'm harping on myself in this reading a little bit. <laughs> Next we have, I can, I don't know how to pronounce this. I am so sorry. I'm going to ruin it. Um, apro, Aproprolite? <laughs> Aprolite? Maybe it's that Aproprolite. <laughs> I don't know how to say it, but I will stay positive as I say it because it asks me to. So I will figure out how to pronounce this in the next uh, time it pops up, but staying positive in whatever situation. How we saw in the star, we're also seeing this need to push past any negativity that we may have and see things from a sense of positivity and optimism. I'll go ahead and pull out the guidebook now and we're going to look up the first. It says, get out of your own way. The path is clear to your success. All you need to do is claim it. You are the sole owner and operator of your personal journey. Shed any thoughts of self-doubt which can lead to derailment. You are entitled to live your best life. Don't relinquish your power by giving in to negative thoughts or trying to avoid or deflect responsibility. Confront any obstacles that emerge and consciously seek out solutions. Success is yours. Take control, take ownership, and take heart, and you will take command of your own destiny. And the crystal affirmation says, I get out of my own way, allowing my success to come to me. So yeah, really talking about how we discussed earlier the need to sometimes it's getting over our own ego when it comes to situations like what I think we're talking about and sometimes it's getting past um like when you think the worst of yourself and that can kind of be a message we're seeing a little bit in the hanged man reverse because it talks about um possibly being a martyr so really sitting there and being like oh yes like I I it, it's my fault and this is the reason why this is happening and blah 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 and like going down kind of that victim kind of mentality route I don't fully see you as being that but if that connects with you it could be that you need to reevaluate your insecurities and reevaluate your self-worth because you are worth it you are worth so much more than those negative thoughts that you have in your mind and trying to turn that into something more positive how we're seeing with both of them they want you to banish that negativity and really lean into the positive aspects of yourself I also liked when it said like shedding any thoughts of self-doubt we're seeing that snake there where they shed their skin. They leave the old behind in order to make way for the new. So again, some sort of renewal or rebirth is kind of the theme that you're going through in 2024. And now let's talk about the crystal that I don't know how to pronounce. My apologies again. <laughs> so it says, stay positive. Keep your head up and your hopes high. Instead of focusing on all the things that can go wrong, it's important to focus on all the things that can go right. Direct your attention to all the positives in your life and allow them to motivate you. Stay grateful in the moment. Allow yourself to be excited about a prospect or opportunity. Why ruin all the fun with second guessing and what ifs? A positive mindset, one centered on hope rather than fear, can overcome almost anything. Where your attention goes, energy flows. Let it flow toward the positive. And the crystal affirmation says, I live in a state of positivity. So yeah, that really resonates with the sense of healing, of growth, newness within yourself, especially if you're not someone who considers yourself extremely positive in general. Um, but also seeing where it talks about let me double check where is it with it talking about how you should be focused on hope rather than fear we're talking about that in the sense of like the star again hope that's one of the biggest um meanings of the star is that newness in hope and self so really tapping into 
those can help guide you toward a better outcome for 2024. I have one set of cards that I'm going to pull from. So an Oracle deck we have here. So for group one, can we talk about what they need to hear for 2024 in their love life? Yes. So this card says Dopio and it says connection to an inner self. So knowing you and how you work from within is really a big message I wanted to get out to you. It's this feeling of you needing to confront and maybe not control, but confront and understand your inner self, where to break your patterns, how to break those patterns, and what's getting in your way to lead your life as your authentic self is kind of like the biggest messages that I'm getting from this card. Um, also not being afraid of connecting with your inner self because you, especially if this is something where you're sitting there going like, why like can't I connect with people more deeply? Like what's going on with that? Um, there's obviously a multitude of things that can get in that way, but I think that there's a need somewhere of self-reflection and sitting down and really going through and understanding where your actions could possibly have caused either issues with people or your inaction. Um, so I'm, I'm not trying to <laughs> harp on you or call you out too much because I know that can be seen as extremely harsh, but this is just the messages that are coming through and the feelings that I'm getting. And there's never... I don't think you did something that's like irreparable. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think that you have allowed something to happen that can't be changed toward the better. And unfortunately, I feel like you're getting it in your head that like you aren't like worthy of this friendship or love or whatever is going on. And you're really like dragging yourself down. But you need to know that like, it's not always all just one person, you know, like the people that are involved may also have their own faults and things that they're going through and insecurities and stresses. And they possibly also took things out on you. But you also have to recognize where you did the same, because it is a back and forth when it comes to people. No one is like perfect and knows all the right things at all the right times kind of situation. So just know where to recognize your own faults but also understand that other people have their own demons that they're going through and it's all about that compromise and meeting in the middle so that's the major vibes that i'm getting for 2024 i feel like you're going through this journey of healing perhaps 2023 caused some upsets because of situations but you're going into 2024 with a more positive outlook and i really see you being able to reclaim this for yourself you're having a lot of positive, powerful energy come out in this reading. And I think that whatever way you want this to go, whichever way you decide upon, you're going to be able to guide yourself through it. Um, for most of you, I'm seeing this as like a platonic, friendshipy kind of trying to repair friendships first before you worry about a deeper relationship. Because you kind of are understanding, well, if I'm having issues with like friends how am I going to expect myself to like be okay with like an actual like partnership where we're on equal footing? So I think you're kind of, you're already taking a look at yourself and you want to start small and build up on that. And if that leads to a further like relationship, you're like down for that and excited for it um, in whatever way that looks to be exciting and fun and relationship for you. Lastly, I'm going to roll this Astro Dice for any last messages. This could be your sun, moon, or rising, or perhaps someone in your life. The first one we're seeing coming out is Gemini. So there's a possibility that there is a Gemini who is involved in this situation. Next, we are seeing Aries for the second time. How we saw Aries with the Empress. We're seeing Aries once more. 
And lastly, we have Virgo coming out. Sorry, I almost didn't have it in front of the camera. <laughs> So anyway, thank you guys so much for getting to the end of your reading. I know it was a lot. <laughs> I know it felt like I was really harping on you. This really felt like me reading to a friend. <laughs> it felt like um, how deep I go in with people that I know. So my apologies because it can sometimes be, Tara can sometimes be very harsh, but just know that I do say this from a point of love. And this is also more over than anything advice and tarot really allows you to go with your free will anything can change so if this is not something that you see as a positive know that you have the free will to change whatever but i do i do see this as a positive so i think that despite you needing to go through some sort of struggle i think you're going to come out okay on the other side it's just about putting in that work to do so. Um, if you go did get this far in your reading, leave a snake emoji in the comment box below and also let me know if the reading did call you out because it feels very pointed, <laughs> feels very, very uh, particular. And if you're okay with sharing, of course, I don't want you to share if you feel nervous about talking about this sort of thing. But just know that I do see this positive influence for you and this positive change. And also, if you guys have any ideas for any further videos that you would want to share, feel free to add that in your comment because I would love to hear from the further Crow Coven and really be able to know what it is that you guys are interested in hearing about in future videos. So again, thank you guys so, so much for watching all the way to the end of your reading, and I will see you guys in the next video. Hello group number two and welcome to your reading all about your potential love story of 2024. So before I get started, I wanted to first thank you guys for watching this video, clicking on the video in general, but I also wanted to just kind of set a reminder to, before we get into this, pull out your like notes app or pull out a pen and pencil and paper to take down whatever notes or messages that you do receive from this reading so you don't have to keep like coming back and being like wait a minute what did they say about this point <laughs> like what's going on kind of thing so I just wanted to let you know of those things real quick before we get started so now that we have gone through that let's head into your reading so you guys chose the pastel journey tarot along with this rose quartz and this rose quartz is really one about like love and affection in general, kind of like more of a gentle sort of love or perhaps a new love. It can also talk about love within yourself and really building upon that and allowing yourself that same sort of gentleness and softness that you would give to another person. So let's go ahead and get started in your reading. I'm going to pull a few cards to get us going. So for group two, please spirit, can we pull a few cards relating to love within 2024? That one was apparently, for some reason, flipped over in my deck. <laughs> So that will be a secret for the rest of the time. Two more, please, spirit. And this one. Okay. So let's get started. I will reveal this card now. We have, wow, the Three of Pentacles. This is interesting. Because the Three of Pentacles actually also came out for Group 1 as the first card. So if you were feeling pulled toward that card or that deck, I don't know why I said that, that group <laughs> at all, there may be messages there for you. It was just very interesting that it was the first card as well. And I'm trying to get these even. My apologies. <laughs> um, so let's talk a little bit about that. In the Three of Pentacles, we are seeing this want for collaboration. It talks about this want to really fulfill yourself when it comes to a group setting. So whether this is a teamwork, I guess, within a group of friends or perhaps even just a teamwork with 
like sense of teamwork within a partnership. It's you wanting to reach this point of learning together and growing together is kind of the overall messages that I'm getting for you guys. Um, perhaps combined with the two of pentacles here in the reverse position, it kind of feels like this card obviously is showing her trying to juggle her two pentacles there and it gives this feeling of balance and being in control but when reversed it feels like um we're just sort of out of sync perhaps disorganized for some of you this could be that you are currently in a partnership with someone and there's some sort of issue when it comes to your finances so perhaps you are someone who is maybe more like stingy with your finances and you like tuck money away to use on a rainy day kind of person like you love to build up your savings so then when things appear later down the line you are like I'm good because I have the money to take care of this, but perhaps your partner is not someone who does that. Perhaps there's someone that spends money uh, really willy-nilly and it ends up getting them in trouble and you kind of have to swoop in and help take care of them. And that has maybe caused some sort of stress within the pair of you. Um, it could even be that you guys may be having an issue when it comes to saving up for something big like one of you is like all about like budgeting and being like if we put this much away on each paycheck or whatever like we're gonna have enough in like three months four months a year and that will take care of everything whereas the other person's like well I mean but I want this thing <laughs> But I want this thing and it's kind of eating away at that and that's causing some sort of upset within the pair of you and that's why we're seeing this like three of pentacles it's this you want to be balanced and you want to work within each other and have this collaboration but it just feels out of sorts for people who aren't in a relationship it could be that maybe you are again you can maybe feel out of balance within yourself or just disorganized in general maybe your life feels very chaotic and you almost don't know how you could fit another person into it in order to make it like make sense because perhaps you're someone who you are just working a lot with the pentacles it can also talk about like work-life balance stuff so it could be that you are just working so much that you're like I don't know how I'm supposed to fit a relationship into my life because I have to work overtime and then I have a side hustle and then like I sleep through the weekends because I'm burning the candle at both ends. Like how am I supposed to add another person into this and not be like completely burnt out? So that could be for some of you if you're not in a relationship and maybe you're currently looking for one or you're trying to figure out how to reprioritize your life to involve another person however we are seeing in the nine of cups that there is some shift that is going to be going on where you're going to actually find all of your wishes to be fulfilled so this comes about at i feel like some level of organization the way we're seeing in this card in general the like vending machine that has everything perfectly lined up and there's it seems like there's just so many choices to be made here um it seems like I'm getting this like just solely off the visuals is you're standing in front of this vending machine and you're able to see everything clearly and like perfectly so and everything's like organized in its own little compartments. So I think you, especially since we just talked about disorganization, I think you being able to get everything lined up and taken care of, even if it takes a little while, you're going to be able to see things for what they are and then you can make your decisions based off of what you're actively seeing i hope that makes sense for some of you um well for all of you honestly but i hope that like it just gets through that <laughs> what i think you need to do is take a good hard look at what you're allowing into your life and what you are 
filling your life up with and perhaps reprioritizing what is more important for you. So if you are someone who finds yourself working a lot of overtime or you are um, trying to work on like a side hustle or something and maybe it's like not going quite where you want to go, you're feeding money into something that isn't quite putting money out for you, maybe it's time for you to like put that on the back burner or not put as much energy into it, maybe not work as many work hours because you are wanting to open yourself up to a new experience, to a new person, or to work with another person, um, like work with your partner. And because of this, um, when you kind of see those things that you've been putting so much time and energy into, you're going to be able to, again, make those proper decisions when you need to make them. We are seeing that it isn't coming super like quickly with the seven of wands um this figure that in here has this very um like stereotypical like yankee style when it comes to like japanese media where they're very much like the person who's going to like <laughs> just kick your ass kind of a delinquent style person where it feels like you have to be this strong very intimidating person in order to get things done in the seven of wands it talks about needing to persevere finding challenges and standing up to those challenges and letting everyone around you know that you aren't going to back down because whatever it is that you are standing for is very like important for you um it could also talk about the potential of competition as well. So if you are in a situation where maybe you have a love interest and you aren't quite there yet with them, but there's other people that are also showing interest in this person, you are like going in there like a baddie <laughs> and you're like trying to command their attention in this sense. But for a lot of you, if this is something like you are trying to work with a current partner or you're trying to kick the butt of your own life because of just how disorganized and chaotic you feel, you are going about it in a sense of like you're the one that's in control of this situation. Or perhaps it's telling you that you have to be the one who holds the control when it comes to this situation. Maybe you're not someone who's normally like this and... You find it very hard to talk, like speak up for yourself and to actually um, get your points across. But I feel like it's sort of a call to action for you to, to step into those shoes and really command that sort of attention. Because I just feel like otherwise you're just going to keep like being... I don't know, not talked over, but like, it almost feels like some level of disrespect, especially if we're talking about a partner who you're the one who saves and they're the one who spends frivolously and you're telling them constantly like, hey, like we wanted a new car or a house or to go on vacation, but you keep spending all this money. Like we're not going to be able to do this if we don't have a goal for us and they just keep spending money. To me, that seems like a level of disrespect. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that's just where I come from. Um, but it does feel like a conversation is going to need to be had where you're going to have to kind of lay down the law a little bit. <laughs> I don't know. This kind of sounds like, like just, it sounds a little harsh, but it almost feels like you being more dominating is going to kind of get through to this person a lot more than if you just continue the way that you have been and have just been allowing this to all go down. Um, but yeah, I, I think that the Seven of Wands does talk and show that you'll be able to move through this. But again, it does feel kind of like you have to almost fight for your right to like work through whatever the situation is. However, if it's on the other side of things and you're the person who's spending frivolously, this might be that you have to kind of kick your own butt and you have to be like really stringent about where you're putting your finances. Because again, we, we feel like we're disorganized in this way. You have to kind of kick your own butt into 
organizing your life in a way where it just feels super fulfilled. Because again, the Nine of Cups is a very beautiful message about having comforts and having this little level of satisfaction and feeling happy about your choices that you have. And it feels like all your wishes are being granted. So I think you're going to reach that point. It's just that there's either some self-reflection that needs to go on or you need to uh, <laughs> really be particular about a certain conversation in a certain way that you conduct yourself within 2024. I'm going to pull some more cards for you because I'm getting that vibe. Let's not drop the cards all over the table. Thank you very much. Sorry. <laughs> Let's pull some more cards for group two, please, Spirit. Can we get a few more messages for their love within 2024? Particularly about either partner or friendships. We're seeing the High Priestess. The Five of Cups in the reversed position. One more, please. And the Queen of Swords in the reversed position. So I feel like you really believing in yourself and looking into um, listening to your intuition when it comes to certain people is going to help you like go down the right path because I think that there is something maybe not something going on that's like hidden or anything but I think you know exactly what you need to do and say in order to lean into this sort of mindset and being able to persevere so you listening to yourself is going to really help with the situation. There's also the potential of you tapping into your higher power as well. So if you are somebody who enjoys tarot and you love like listening to these pick a card readings or you're like, you know what, if I turn to a like reader for them to read me my own personal reading, it might really help you in gaining a better understanding of what's going on. But if you're someone who you own your own decks, do yourself a reading because I think that this is something that can kind of help you see past some of these illusions and like break past like uh, the mystery of the situation. The High Priestess is also represented by a lot of the water signs so it could be that your sun moon or rising is cancer scorpio or pisces or perhaps someone in this situation has these water sign tendencies as well next we're seeing with the five of cups in the reverse position and this does talk about this ability to really move on from what is going on there's some level of acceptance and forgiveness happening so if there was a situation with a partner maybe you're currently going through a situation you're going to be able to accept what has happened thus far and you guys are going to come to some level of agreement with one another and you're going to be able to move on past that so that's beautiful to know but i would say to make sure that you pay close attention that we're seeing in the Queen of Swords reversed that you don't allow this sort of takeover, the negative aspects of this sort of stereotype where this card literally talks about being like overly emotional and being very cold hearted. So come at things with a sense of love and joy when it comes to that growth within one another. It doesn't have to be like conversations don't have to be, well, you honestly all like fights <laughs> should not be you trying to accuse the person of being like the worst or person who's completely in the wrong kind of thing it should always come at a level of you mutually respecting one another sitting down having a calm conversation and actually listening to one another try to figure out why it is that they can't handle saving that money like what makes it feel like they have to keep spending kind of thing and be like listen like we keep talking about how this is a thing that we both actually want for ourselves but 
to be realistic, we have to lay down the paths to actually save the money for that. So it really hurts me when we talk about this and then you go and spend all this money and kind of just see where that conversation leads. Um, if this is talking not about a like lover that you're currently with and it's more about you having to deal with kind of yourself, I think you're going to be able to forgive yourself for like any past mistakes that you made, any past like disorganization or anything like that. And you're going to be able to realize where your faults are and be able to move on from that. However, I do still want to warn you to just be careful when it comes to how you treat yourself. Don't take it out on yourself in a way that is you just like constantly talking down on yourself we're seeing with the swords that this can talk about like your mental state so taking it out on you to where you are causing yourself like mental harm is not the way to go and obviously don't cause mental harm upon anyone else but I really think that you just need to be careful about how strong you're going at this find a even balance within yourself before you have this conversation overall I do think in 2024 for some of you, I'm really getting this vibe that you're, like, already with somebody. Um, for those of you who are trying to find love and you're wondering if this is going to be a thing that can happen, I do think you're going to be able to persevere and you're going to reorganize your life to a point where, yeah, we have the Nine of Cups. You're going to be able to have, like, all your wishes fulfilled. So I think, though, you might have to just be critical about what you're prioritizing in your life so the possibility of you just like spending way too much time at work or way too much time on things that actually don't matter um, when you look at those things and you start cutting away hours of things that you spend time on during the day you're gonna recognize like hey I can't do have time for dating like I can actually talk to people and when you get to that point that's when it's really gonna open up for you um, again, just be careful of being too headstrong and knowing when to forgive yourself and move on from any, what you would consider past mistakes. Let's go ahead and go into the next deck of cards. I would love to pull two cards, see if we can get any further information about your love story for 2024. We have one that just flew out. We have the bear and cedar with leadership. So yeah, this level of leadership is something that I think is going to really help you when it comes to attracting a partner to you or you working through any situations with a current partner. Um, and maybe this is not something that you're used to. Like maybe you are like not the leader whatsoever. <laughs> it is not in your blood. And so it really is like nerve-wracking to you and scary almost to you intimidating in that sense maybe looking up videos or material that can help you on how to kind of foster those leadership skills can really help you when it comes to um working with a partner um just knowing don't push yourself too far and don't make it that you're the person that has to take care of everything so like if this is not like a natural thing for you and you're suddenly going into like oh i have to take on like this parent role in order to take care of my partner and get them to listen to me like that should not be happening either <laughs> so just know that it's you i think moreover than anything else guiding the conversations that need to be had so you guys can reflect within one another like within yourselves as to why things aren't aligned um and if this has to do with your life feeling so chaotic that you can't have time for a partner i think it's you kind of stepping into this leadership within yourself and recognizing like that you lead your own life and you are the one that gets to call the shots so really taking on that that bare energy of being just so like powerful and being very um 
like comfortable within yourself like bears to me it's so funny because like they they always like wander around <laughs> kind of thing just kind of ambling and they don't like seem like they have a care in the world like if you've ever just watched bears just kind of walking around they just like don't care and it's because they don't have to be afraid of other things like attacking them it's kind of that feeling of like you just being able to be like here I am I'm taking up space and that is fine and there's nothing that can get in my way is kind of the feeling that I'm getting for you guys we also have the bobcat and blackthorn with patience so it could be in 2024 that maybe you are needing to take a lot of steps and a lot of time to see this growth in this movement again with this being for the entirety of 2024 it's very possible that this is kind of like a work in progress it's not like you get to like snap your fingers and suddenly like everything has fallen into your lap it could be a harder journey especially with this seven of wands that perseverance so you're gonna meet these challenges and luckily it feels like in 2024 you're gonna have this like wherewithal to push through and actually meet the challenges head on instead of like just constantly struggling and feeling like you are like just like not even able to tread the surface of the water it feels like you're going to just consistently put in the time and the effort and it, your patience is going to eventually end up bearing fruit and you're going to be able to see that change and that progress either within yourself or within your current relationship it's just needing to take those steps first in order to reach that point i'm also getting that feeling again with the high priestess really listening to yourself and what you need within yourself and also again if you're someone who you tend to go to like pick a card readings for answers it may be that you need to have more of a like one-on-one -on -one personal reading to really dig in deep. So either you're able to read yourself or if you have a friend that can read or if there's a reader that you resonate with who you can pay to do a reading for you, I think you can uncover some further answers if that's something that you're interested in because I really think that you almost feel like I'm getting this like feeling of like you just feel so disorganized that you just don't know which way to go and that is causing you all of this internal like upset right now let's go ahead and pull a few of these i'm going to pull two cards from this deck here and i'm actually also going to be using the guidebook that comes along with it because i actually just received these cards recently and i want to make sure i get all the messages for you guys so let's go ahead and pull two cards for group two about their love in 2024. For the first one here, we see Shungite, which says detox your life. Yes, this is literally like giving me the vibes of when I was talking about that need to reprioritize your life and like what's going on in it that's really calling to me when it comes to that so we will see more in the book in a second and the second card for group two please spirit oh gosh they're trying to fly all over citrine i love citrine it says bring in the light so let's set that there so for this first one this shungite it says <clears throat> your mind body and spirit need a system reboot this is so real <laughs> without necessarily realizing it we are affected by our environment and all the things in it from the technology constantly at our fingertips to the air we breathe the foods we eat and the health and beauty products we use take a closer look at what you choose to surround yourself with and what you put on and in your body there may be certain areas of there may be a certain area of your life that needs simplifying take what you need from it and release what you don't so real <laughs> so real a virtual cleanse will help clear out the energetic sludge and get you back to feeling your best and the affirmation says i nurture myself by giving my system what it needs and releasing what it does not that is so real for you guys i was 
like kind of feeling that this entire time too <laughs> of course I didn't say it very like clearly but detox in general so really taking control of all aspects of your life where again you have to look and organize the things that you need and want before you can make those proper choices for yourself and how I talked about a little bit into the um, if you're working too much overtime or a side hustle or something, maybe that side hustle isn't quite going where you want it to go and you're putting in like 5, 10, 15 hours a week into something that maybe isn't right for you right now. So this doesn't have to be a hard stop. It can literally be, I learned some lessons from this. It was good while it lasted and I'm willing to release it for now in order to change things up for myself to go down a new path. Um, if I could tell you the amount of times that I have tried to be like a presence online that f like was fun for me and felt, I don't know, like um, fulfilling. And then I've stopped that and instead done something new. It's it's up there. <laughs> I've done like nothing on YouTube before. The, like Chromates Apothecary is the first time I've ever done YouTube videos, but trying to do things on Instagram or trying to have like um, I like did a podcast for a little while kind of thing, which it was honestly just for fun and just to get opinions out there. But after a while, I was like, is anyone listening to this? <laughs> like, is this just me talking into the void? Because I wasn't honed into like a brand or honed into something that could like really help people. It was more like, I just want to talk about something fun, um, which can lead down the right path for some people. But I had to like look at that and be like, I'm like spending like so much time filming these things because they were like two hours long and then having to edit them, which was another like four hours added to that every single week in order to post and then no one is probably listening to it I had to sit there and be like what am I doing I learned so so much about how to edit and how to make things sound clearer and um how to structure certain like how to structure like episodes and things like that but it came down to me realizing that that's what that's not what I needed to do in life. And then I pulled away from it and I had so much free time that I got to fill it up with other things and really got to reprioritize. So looking, sorry, that was a like long tangent, but I wanted to share that like, you're not <laughs> the only person that goes through this. Just knowing that like, even if it's something that you kind of tuck away for a little while, you can always come back to it. Um, again, like I haven't gone back to that sort of thing, but I instead shifted over to doing YouTube because I realized like, hey, I've been reading for so long and I love reading. And also um, my partner and I started Chromates Apothecary because um, my partner has a lot of intense allergies and a lot of like skin issues, very, very sensitive skin. So we started our own like all natural like self-care products so then she can actually use things that aren't going to hurt her skin because we know absolutely everything that's going into it I handcraft all of those items whenever like she needs them or when we get orders sort of thing that she doesn't have to be afraid that her skin is gonna like explode <laughs> kind of thing so it's kind of that level of detoxifying as well as pay attention to the things in your life that you could possibly do away with and also pay attention again how the book said the things that you're eating and putting on and having around your body in your environment it could just be pulling away from you instead of giving to you and don't even see it as like a failure like if you've been doing a side hustle and you're like oh, but this is like me having to say that like I didn't succeed you succeeded in trying and that's like one of the biggest things to push you into a new path and going on like a new journey. Um, also with, what was I going to say? I'm zoning out. Sorry. <laughs> I thought I was going to say something extra, but no, apparently not. I just think that it's not, I just think it's not a negative for you. It just may be something that's not right, right now. That's what I'll leave you off with. Next we have Citrine. 
I love citrine in general. It's just such a like positive and like fun crystal whenever I have it around me. It says, bring in the light. So it says, let the sunshine pour in. Some spiritual vitamin D will lift your spirits and your sights on life. Let happiness be a choice you make every day. Just like the sun bursts through the fog on a cloudy day, you have the ability to bring light in, even when you might be feeling a little blue. You are in charge of the weather within your inner environment. Embrace what it feels like to feel good and make a conscious effort to stay in the light. And the crystal affirmation says, I let the light back in. So yes, you needing to, again, detoxify and then instead have your life filled with positivity and joy and newness is something that I think is really going to benefit you during this time. I realized too, I was going to, when I was talking about detoxing and like letting the light in so they kind of coincide with us, is that I think February 1st, if not maybe a little bit later in February, we're going to actually be offering at chromatesapothecary.com a Florida water solution that I've created and it's used for that detoxifying sort of, um, kind of like solution. So being able to purify your environment and purify yourself, you can use it as a perfume, as a cleaning solution, anything like that, because it is literally just flowers and alcohol. <laughs> it's literally what it is, but it is something that I have specifically magically charged with purifying and cleansing energies because I needed to make some for myself so I could use it for our home as well. So it's something that I also use. So if you're interested in that, that is at chromatesapothecary.com in the near future. If you join our mailing list, I will be putting out when that will release. So sorry for the little ad plug, but I figured that would be something to put out there for those of you who are interested. Of course, if you're not, just ignore this segment. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Lastly, I'm going to pull one final card for you guys. So one more card for group two for their love of 2024. What do they need to know or keep in mind during this time? Yes. So in this card here, Mario Zuccero, it says, honor your deepest self. And so you truly knowing yourself and how you operate as a person and also allowing yourself to exist fully as you. I don't know why that's such a strong like thing that I want to say right now. And not feeling like you have to bow down to other people is the biggest feeling that I'm getting. Also, how we see like the sun shining like so, so brightly on this character. Not getting tied up in the little happenings of the world and things that can hold you back. Again, this character kind of gives off that sort of delinquent kind of vibe. So being very intimidating with this sword here is like trying to command this powerful energy instead of withering away is kind of a feeling that I'm getting for you. And again, just not being afraid to how it says honoring your deepest self is not being afraid to listen to yourself and push forward when it comes to the goals that you set for yourself and what you actually want out of your life, especially in 2024, focus on you. And that's going to help you in reprioritizing your life and the things that you want and you need. If you're with a partner, like indicate that you are honoring yourself in the way that you are speaking up for yourself and that you need to be listened to as well. That is a feeling that I think you guys need to hear. Okay, and lastly, I am going to roll this Astro Dice to see if there's any further messages we can get for you guys during this reading. So let me go ahead and roll this. This could be your sun, moon, or rising, or someone that you are working with, or perhaps a new partnership. We're seeing Leo coming out first. Next we have Pisces, so that is the next, the uh, second time we're seeing some sort of water with uh, the High Priestess also indicating Pisces. And lastly we have Gemini. 
let me go ahead and set this here. So I just wanted to take a moment, of course, to thank you guys so, so much for getting this far in your reading. If you liked this reading or it resonated with you, remember to leave a like and also leave a comment of a bear emoji in the comment box below to let myself and others know that you did reach this point in your reading. And also, if you guys have any um, comments of... Um, what you would like to possibly see in the future when it comes to videos, feel free to let me know because I would love to hear from the Further Crow Collective in the Crow Coven of what it is that you guys would like to see when it comes to tarot pick a card readings. Also, again, thank you guys so much. I hope you have an amazing 2024. I hope your love journey goes very well within finding yourself reprioritizing your life in order to further love yourself and to bring love to you and also if you do have a current partnership that you're able to work through this little bump in the road thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video hello group number three and welcome to your reading all about your love story in 2024 so before we get started in the reading i did want to just kind of as a quick reminder is make sure that you guys are staying hydrated during this video it is a little bit long so feel free to grab a snack and something to drink while you are listening in and also to either pull out your notes app on your phone or to grab a piece of paper and a writing utensil so you can take down any messages that you hear during this reading so you can um, go back to that and reference it later instead of being like wait a minute what did Nick say so go ahead and grab those items as we get started so first off we are going to go with talking about you having chosen not only the okay tarot but then along with this howlite and the meaning behind the howlite really talks about being able to um bring new ideas into focus, into your lens, um, possibly the idea of bringing someone new into focus as well. So if you are someone who currently isn't with someone, it could be that you are trying to focus on having that newness in your life, or possibly if you are with somebody, you're refocusing on you guys' relationship with one another. It can also help with feeling very, um, when, when you're going through such as like burnout at work or just burnout in your life in general, it can really help balance you for when you are feeling overworked. So we're going to keep that there for you guys and hopefully that can give you some guidance and support during the reading as well. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So please Spirit, can I pull a few cards for group three? about their love journey, their love story in 2024. This one wants to out. Queen of Wands to start with. The Seven of Pentacles in the reversed position. The Page of Pentacles. One last one for now, please, Spirit. The Queen of Cups. Overall, I am seeing a lot of positivity. I'm seeing that as of right now, I feel like you are feeling pretty inspired and like you are kind of trying to go into 2024 with this sense of newness. It feels like in a way of you trying to shift kind of like your mindset possibly from how you used to feel before whether it be about yourself or about your sort of um your relationship when it comes to love in general i'm seeing you trying to almost go about it in a different way it feels very warm and inviting you feel like almost like this is sort of a journey that you want to go on so feeling very determined about seeking a positive outcome for yourself and because of this you're kind of um you're actually attracting that same level to you as well with the seven of pentacles reversed we are seeing that there might be some 
not even necessarily delays, but you might see just limited success in the way of you're not quite sure exactly what you want in your life or quite um, maybe even necessarily like experienced. So it could be that you haven't tried to date other personalities before. Maybe you go for the same sort of person and you haven't branched out to someone who could be different for you. And that might be a potential pitfall to look out for just in case that that like applies to you. It could just be that you are... Um, really just sort of going for the same sort of person. It can also indicate um, some sort of like lack of like a long-term vision, which isn't necessarily bad. It could just be that maybe you're someone who, maybe other things are important in your life right now, such as like your career or being, um, whether it's like a career that you like work for someone else or you're trying to build something up on your own, such as like you being your own boss sort of thing. Maybe you're so focused on those things because we have these like powerful queen mentions here where you're kind of the one that's in charge that you aren't necessarily opposed to the potential of just like hooking up with people like not necessarily going at it as a like I need to see a full-blown relationship come out of this and maybe because of that you are not opposed to just dating for the sake of dating like it's fun and as long as all the parties know like what's going on it's not that big of a deal so I don't want you to feel like shamed or anything like that but also for those of you who may be looking for an actual like deep-seated extended relationship, there is a possibility that you may potentially be finding people or personalities who this is kind of their mindset. And so you guys are like getting into relationships where you're thinking it's like ride or die, like end game sort of relationship. And that person is like, no, this is just fun for now kind of thing. And it's possible that they're not fully expressing that before you guys get into whatever situation ship it is that you're getting into. So just be very wary when it comes to that. This is going to be just very, it's, it's a very general reading. So this is going to be very specific to just certain people that are seeing this. But just for those where this might be what they're falling into, just kind of keep your eye out for that sort of situation. For those of you who this is related to, you're more worried about a potential of like friendship, it kind of almost gives me this feeling like you kind of are trying to look for new friends or you wanted to kind of branch out. Maybe you're kind of transitioning from like high school into college or like college into the working world or some sort of shift is happening. And so there's going to be like a new group of friends that are going to be appearing, but it almost feels like in the beginning, it's going to take a little bit more time than what you initially wanted to kind of form these bonds. But in whatever situation applies to you, I do see that there is some sort of movement with this because we are seeing the Page of Pentacles, um, which does talk about your manifestations coming true. So whatever you're putting into the world, I'm seeing it coming to you and it's going to work out in that way. So if you are like, I really want to attract a partner, I see that coming to you. I want to attract friendships that's coming to you as well. Um, I also wanted to point out how I was talking about the potential of like, maybe you're going into the working world or even perhaps having like a new job, like you might be moving into a new job. And that's why you're, where you're like looking for new friends and just new connections in general. The Page of Pentacles does talk about a new job opportunity and also having like new finances coming into you. So this could be indicative of either a shift that you are kind of on the fence about and you're not sure, but it's offered to you or something or a situation with someone is going to be offered to you. So keep your eye out for that. So I, I do think that that is a positive thing that is going to be offered to you. And it's about whether or not you want to 
sort of take people up on whatever this offering is. Again, you're uh, bookended by two queens and they are just so in tune with themselves and know exactly how they feel about themselves. So I really see you as someone who you kind of have like everything under control. I'm, at least from what I'm feeling in this first part of this reading, it feels like you tend to be pretty level-headed and you can basically think your way out of any sort of situation, but you just have to be careful of potential outside sources. For people who might be in a relationship currently, I would say one of the biggest things to look out for is that maybe you are on the same page as the person that you're currently with. So maybe you're sitting there being like, I am ready for uh, the ring, where's the ring at sort of thing, but they aren't quite there. And it's possible that you just have to be patient for just a little while longer. And maybe that's when you will see this manifestation come out. Um, just keep in mind, just kind of watch the situation and try not to take too much in on yourself or stress yourself or your partner out during this time as well. I know it can be a lot to have to wait for that. But I am seeing in the Queen of Cups, though, that you feel very in control of yourself. Again, this is that emotional security. You're very calm. You tend to be very intuitive and are able to connect with yourself and able to feel compassion for yourself and other people. And if this doesn't sound like you, I believe the Queen of Wands with her fun and more vibrant and determined side versus the Queen of Cups in being more emotionally secure and calm and gentle. They need to be married within you and need to be able to be something that you take on for yourself in order to bring these things into your life. We're seeing with the Queen of Wands and the Queen of Cups this fire and water sort of energy coming together. So again, a blend of opposites need to happen and need to take part. Um, for those of you who may be, um, perhaps you are female like presenting or you are female and perhaps you are interested in like the same sex, this could be indicative of perhaps these two personalities like you and them or them and you sort of thing. It might be you guys coming together as well. So let's go ahead and pull a few more cards from the OK Tarot to kind of see if we can get any further messages. So this is kind of like your current state and what you may be going through in 2024, but let's dive deeper into the actual love portion. So can we get some messages about their love in 2024? Ooh, this whole pile fell out. Can I do them? I don't know. I'm not feeling it. I will pull this card though because this one did fall out. So I will pull the King of Swords. That one showed. Let's go ahead and shuffle and pull a few more. The Hermit reversed. One more please and Page of Swords reversed. So the King of Swords talks about the potential of there being someone who might be kind of leading things with like an iron fist kind of feeling. They could be doing things that are seemingly um, only benefiting themselves and it could be it feels like obviously this opposite here of this queen is we're seeing a king. Um, so maybe this is potentially you in a relationship and things just aren't working out the way that you want them to be. And it almost feels like they're going about it in a way that is trying to undermine you a little bit and you're taking notice of this more and more despite you trying to remain calm and collected. Kind of like how I was talking almost about people who when they get into relationships and they're like in it for <laughs> like the long haul but then their partner that they're with was not expecting it to, to be that way because they didn't relinquish the fact that they didn't want it to be a serious relationship. I really think that this is something you should keep an eye on, specifically with this one coming out 
along with this card here, the Seven of um, Pentacles reversed and how I was seeing it as kind of like that something that being something that you could fall into and then it being linked with the Queen of Wands. It kind of feels like these two, that there's something going on and it might lead to that. So really keep your eye on the people that you are opening yourself up to just so you guys are on the same page. Like people can say that they want to be in a relationship, but then they will do things like they won't text you back or they won't try to make an actual concerted effort into actually like getting to know you they just want to like like really it's all about themselves so it's like you're at their beck and call or whenever they feel like texting you like for a booty call or something like that it ends up feeling more like that versus an actual working partnership so I feel like this is some advice to take in if that's something that you do not want in your life and you don't want to go through that struggle or stress really vet the people that you're with and don't just take what they say as fact also look at their actions look and see if they put in the care and effort into trying to know you and actually be with you. There is the potential of someone who may be a Virgo who is coming into your life, um, or you could possibly also be a Virgo. Um, with the Hermit in the reverse position, this to me always talks about um, like you needing to go into this sort of time of like withdrawing from people and from the world around you there's the potential of you maybe feeling pretty lonely during this time or feeling very isolated from other people but it tends to come from a point of needing to heal from something instead of just doing it for the sake of doing it so maybe this is just another theme of your 2024 is maybe you feel a little bit more like lonely than you would like maybe you're not like suddenly like having a lot of people fall into your lap all these choices and everything and you're just sitting there going like well why is it that like why is no one being like drawn to me like what's going on especially if you feel very calm and settled within yourself and you're just like an overall positive and optimistic person to then suddenly feel like there's no one like really around you could be very hurtful so try not to take that in on yourself just know that you I think are probably going through something that needs your attention elsewhere a little bit more and that needs to be sorted out um, before you can come out of this like hermit mode um, because the hermit is really here to help guide you and help protect you during this time because there seems to be some sort of shadiness going on around you when it comes to the people around you so that's why I'm warning you and trying to make sure that you know that there's there are good people out there. It just seems like right now there is a certain type of person that is attracted to you that you have to sort of watch out for because we're seeing also the Page of Swords reversed and this talks about someone who is like all talk but no action kind of like how I was discussing with the King of Swords reversed where it was like watch them and don't let them just say like yeah I'm in it like this is we're definitely together but then they do absolutely nothing to actually make it feel like you're in a relationship with one another um there's also a feeling of like quickness in the sense of like they want to make it super like quick and super official really really fast kind of thing that can be something to be careful of as well because if you've never been with a narcissist before this is a tactic that they like to employ is that they will sort of jump at any opportunity to get with someone and try to make it super deep super fast in the sense of they'll sometimes even like love bomb you and it makes you feel oh yeah they definitely like care about me because they say they want to be with me and they're showing me all these things they're getting me flowers and writing me love letters and all this other stuff but then a few months down the line it starts turning more into the king of swords reversed where I didn't bring it up before but can indicate abuse so just be very very careful about who you are opening up to and letting in during this time the last message for the page of swords reversed 
that we're seeing is that there's a lot of undelivered promises. So think of someone promising that they're going to change. So for some of you, this could be the potential of you're in a relationship with somebody, but it always feels like it's their way or the highway, and it makes you feel very lonely. And because of that, there's this constant cycle of them saying like, hey, like, I'm going to change, like, I didn't mean it like that kind of thing. And they bring you back into this web and you keep having to go through this process, even though you're trying to be so compassionate and caring for this person. So just keep in mind that these are things for you to watch out for. As always, tarot is all about advice and you have free will. So things can absolutely change at any point. This is why I like to say for you guys to just kind of keep watch for certain signs and to make sure that you're always good because if you, especially falling into somebody who can one minute like love bomb you and then the next minute they're doing things that hurt you, they aren't going to change and they're just going to keep bringing you back and forth uh, into this cycle. So just keep in mind like whatever situation it is that you're in, just watch out for that happening. For those of you where this is a friendship situation, it kind of gives me this feeling like you may have outgrown the people in your life and you guys are kind of going different ways and they're almost outing you in the way of like they're othering you. So it feels like you're really, really lonely despite having this group of friends and you're like, I don't understand like what is going on with this situation. And they try to say things like, oh yeah, like we're, we can all definitely hang out. And then you find out like a week later that they all hung out <laughs> and they've all like been posting it all over social media, but you weren't ever invited. It kind of gives me that feeling like you're getting pushed out from the group in a really like negative way. Like it feels like high school shenanigans <laughs> and it feels like you're more mature than that. And people who do have this more mature, higher level of self, they end up getting ostracized from people who do not have that higher vibration because those people are insecure and they don't know how to tolerate it. So instead they do the next best thing, which is bully. <laughs> and um, you just need to protect yourself from whatever the situation is. I'd say that for 2024, probably one of the biggest messages is going to be whatever situation you're in currently, you or might find yourself in within the next couple of months, you're going to need to just keep your eyes open for any like red flags, even possibly to the point of um, maybe seeking help from other people who have gone through similar things and kind of ask them like, what are some signs I can look out for in case you're possibly naive to like the dating scene or maybe you're dating a new type of person and like a new personality and you're just kind of like, I don't really know like what this means, <laughs> things like that. So just basically just be very, very careful and don't allow other people to take away this power that you have within yourself because it should First and foremost, you should focus on you being safe. And that means that if you're going to disappoint somebody because you have to break up with them because you don't feel safe with them, uh, yeah, get rid of them. <laughs> you do not need them in your life. I'm going to go ahead and pull a few more cards for you, group three. And we get some more messages for group three, please, spirit. Any more messages for their love life or anything that they need to hear for 2024 regarding love? The first one we're seeing is the snail and huckleberry and it says trust in the invisible. So the things that you don't see every day, the things that are like kind of like how I was talking about the all talk no action sort of situation is all of the really little things that you see going on really trust in the meaning behind those things. So if somebody is saying that they're with you, but they're not texting you back, they're not returning your phone calls, or they're like causing fights and then leaving and not talking to you for days on end, those are very, very direct signs of some form of abusive manipulation going on. And you need to trust in yourself that this is not the path you should be taking. 
also trusting in the invisible such as um, one if you are a believer of any sort of faith be guided by whatever it is that you believe in and lastly the other message that I'm getting from this card is um, trusting in kind of like the unknown so if you're somebody who say like you have been dating the same person for like years and you're just like this is all I've ever known I've been with this person since high school or like whatever the situation is and you're like I'm just so comfortable in this life despite all this like negative stuff that's coming through you're like I don't know anything beyond this you should put your trust in that unknown and in the invisible like um potential of being able to change things and expand and having a new beginning is kind of the feeling that I am getting from that card. Let's go ahead and pull any more messages for group three. We're also seeing the Ram in Dahlia and it says determination. So this gives me this feeling almost like whatever you're going to decide upon is going to be kind of your answer. <laughs> It kind of gives me this feeling of like, if you came into this reading with like a preconceived notion of how you felt about a situation, this is going to harden you and make you go forward with whatever you wanted. So if you kind of came into this being like, kind of feel like breaking up with this person, and then you're like hearing all this stuff and recognizing that it's a negative, you're like, yep, I'm done. <laughs> and you're going to be like, wash my hands and leave. Or it kind of feels like if you came into it being like, no, I think I can fix this person. So I don't want to call anybody out majorly, but it almost feels like you're going to push through like no matter what kind of thing, which can absolutely work for some people. It's just that the other person has to be willing to change, such as like seeking therapy or having couples counseling or just going through some really intense self-reflection. But I just feel like there may be some sort of stubborn streak that is in you. And especially if you're someone who does feel very powerful and feels very queenly, it kind of gives off the vibes of you being like, well, I have to be determined and I have to be stubborn because that's how you get shit done. It's kind of the vibe that I'm getting from this card is you could possibly be wanting to um, just go forth with like what you have known because you're like, no, I've got control of this situation. If the queens don't really resonate with you, there is the possibility that, again, it could be that these are things that you need to embody. Again, that fire and water, that balance in order to recognize what is happening and what patterns keep happening in your life as well. So just keep that in mind. I keep talking about someone who is very like headstrong and like ready to push forward and is a leader. But if that does not sound like you at all, I think you have to become more of a leader and more headstrong and be able to stand up for yourself. Next, I'm going to pull a couple of cards from this deck here, and they're actually new to me, so I'm going to use their guidebook as well to pull out any other messages that I can gather for you guys. So let's go ahead and pull a couple cards for group three. The first one coming out is Moonstone. And it says, live your purpose. And then next, one more message, Spirit. We have Phantom Quartz with Embrace Change. Yeah, we were talking a little bit about that, is that need for change. There's going to be something... I think that's going to kind of be almost like a breaking point in 2024 where you're going to recognize that you're not getting exactly what you want out of your life and you're going to have to kind of make a really harsh decision. And whether that's like changing up your group of friends or changing the type of person that you date or standing up against like a current partner and breaking up with them. I think there's something that's going to be very strongly needed for you to get yourself out of whatever this rut is because it feels like you're clinging 
onto what you know. So let's go ahead and start with Moonstone first. We'll talk about that and then we'll move on to that Phantom Quartz, which is right here. So I'm going to mark it. So with Moonstone, it says, Life is a journey. We each have a unique calling to find our own way along a path to a more purposeful life. It is time to discover a deeper meaning within yourself and to ensure the actions you take and the choices you make are, in fact, intentional and purposeful. How can you make a difference? What can you contribute? What is your legacy? Follow your heart as well as your conscious. Just like the moon waxes and wanes, you may feel at times as though you are getting closer to and then further from your true purpose. When you know you will walk the path toward your highest purpose, you will feel fulfilled each and every day. And the affirmation for this crystal is I walk my path with purpose. So really, I'm feeling very deeply that when you know you walk on the path toward your highest purpose, you fulfill each and every day, is ask yourself truthfully, like, do you feel fulfilled? Is there something that you want to change in your life? And what are the steps that you can take to make this change and form into a reality that you want to be living, that need to be determined and trusting in the invisible, trusting that sort of like change can really help you be guided along a path that is better suited to yourself. Especially if you're sitting here, like you're watching a tarot pick a card reading about like love and everything and wanting that sort of guidance is I think that there's something fundamentally within your current life that needs to go through this hermit mode you you have to go at a at a place of healing before you can see this change from where you're at currently with your love life into something that you actually want and that would be fulfilling for you and again if you don't feel like these queens you have to start treating yourself more like a queen and recognize all of the positive positive parts of you and the goodness that you are able to share and display and that is what is going to help attract the right person to you um for those of you who may be going through something a bit more dark a little bit more sinister if you are dating someone who is just using you or they are really just displaying horrible, horrible traits. It's one of those things where um, if you are someone who does have some sort of like deep-seated trauma or pain in your life that you have not healed from, you can sometimes attract people who like to cling to that sort of darkness and they like to exploit it. And I say this as someone who has gone through this before this is something that I've had to deal with and it led me down a path that was not good, I would say. As <laughs> don't want to uh, suddenly vent on a YouTube video or anything, but just know that until I was able to stand up for myself and recognize that what I was going through and what I was putting myself through further was not good, only then was I able to break away from that pattern. And I am now with my wife, who I've been with for 10 years. So it's one of those things where you have to find the time where you need to put your foot down and to stand up for yourself if you already aren't at that point and already displaying again these queenly traits just make sure you vet the people that you're around whether it be friends or family or a romantic connection and just protect yourself is one of the biggest things I want you guys to keep in the forefront of your mind Next, with this Phantom Quartz, um, it says, In a period of flux, find comfort in the uncomfortable. Kind of like that trusting in the invisible again. Change is happening all around you, so make the most of it. After all, the only thing that is constant in life is change. Embrace the uncertainty and lean into the inevitable. These are opportunities that allow you to grow, evolve, and move forward. It's how you move through the stations of life that make or break your journey. Instead of resisting change, allow it to propel you forward so you can level up your life. And the crystal action on here is I embrace change. So 
I was talking about it before in the reading, but again, just sort of a reaffirmation is that there's something in your life intrinsically that needs to undergo some level of change. The hermit is here to kind of almost force your hand into it, whether that be you needing to like pull back from someone or something and really do a lot of like self-reflection because the hermit upright is about um, going through that self-reflection, going through um, the soul-searching sort of span of time and listening to your inner guidance. And so when it's reversed, it gives me this feeling like you're kind of resisting that, but there's a deep-seated need for you to grow through that and really change your outlook. I don't want to make you feel like I am... <laughs> trying to like push anything on you I am just very very blunt and I try to be really honest while also trying to be like hey I am here for you I am here for your continued growth and for you to have positive things come to you so just keep in mind that this isn't me trying to like talk down on you or be like wow why haven't you done that like no like <laughs> maybe at myself but I want everyone to go through these positive changes that they need to look at and know that they're not alone and know that they shouldn't take things out on themselves and try to like, I don't know, just talking down on yourself. I don't want you to go through that and think like, oh, I'm the reason why. Like, I want you to like forgive that part of you and be able to actually go through healing instead of just falling into this cyclical like, this is what's always going to happen to me sort of mindset because you are stronger than that. Next, I'm going to pull one of these cards here towards the end of the reading. This is for their love life in 2024. What further messages can we give to group three, please, spirit? We actually pulled this card for group two as well, I believe. I'm fairly certain. The card is, no, this was for group one. I apologize. Um, it says, this is Dopio and it says connection to an inner self. So what I was talking about with group one, for one, if you were not, if you were feeling drawn a little bit towards group one, there might be some connections there. So feel free to give that a listen if you'd like. But for you guys, if you're not interested in that, for those further messages, I'll say what I said there to the best of my <laughs> recollection is that um, there, there's this overall feeling of you understanding that there is something deeper within you that you have to kind of get in balance with. So there's another version of you or there's something going on that you have kind of hidden away for some time that you need to no longer be afraid of expressing and recognizing within yourself. So knowing truly and deeply who you are and being able to live authentically as yourself instead of people pleasing. Because I feel like <laughs> from the rest of the cards that we've pulled, some of you could possibly fall into the trap as being me mega, mega, mega people pleasers. And so you kind of could possibly be a bit of a doormat and be letting people take advantage of you for whatever reason. Um, but I think there is, again, that need to tap into these queens. Or if you're already very queenly, is letting you know that there are people around you who could possibly be trying to taking take advantage of you and you needing to become a little bit more vigilant and maybe cut out the people in your life who are bringing this upon you um this connection to your inner self needs to come from a place of healing and of love in order for you to be able to move forward and be able to draw in the people that are actually worthy of you instead of drawing in people who are trying to just use or abuse you. That is one thing that I really want to get through to people is this feeling of you recognizing your self-worth and recognizing where you need to be treated gently and from a point of healing and how that vulnerability can look 
to somebody who has more nefarious motives and what they would do to you and I want you to try to avoid that as best as possible. So of course, again, I mentioned it before, tarot is all advice. You have free will and you can change your outcomes. But I do think that one of the biggest things for 2024 is you have to connect within yourself, go through some soul searching like we saw in the hermit and really reconnect to yourself and what you want for yourself and for your future. Lastly, I'm going to roll this astro dice a few times. So this could be your sun, moon, or rising, or perhaps someone in your life who could be important during this time. So the first one we're seeing is Taurus coming out. Next we have Libra. And lastly, we have Capricorn. So I'm going to go ahead and set this here to the side. And just to reiterate, I do think you guys have the power to push through this. Um, 2024 may not be where you find your true love and everything is magically healed and you're getting married and all that other stuff. I think that for those of you with partners, you might be going through some rocky times. And so to look out for those hardships, um, Keep in mind the motives of other people and really do what you can to protect yourself during this time. Also, if you got this far in your reading, leave an ice cream emoji in the comment box below. Also, if you feel safe to do so, let me know if this sounds like you because it can be very nerve wracking to want to talk about something, especially if you're in the direct middle of it. But if you feel like this is something that has really like touched you and you're like, whoa, these messages are wild. I would love to hear from you guys to know that like there's that connection there where it's like you are alone and I'm here to support that as well. Also, if you are interested, I would love to know if, like in your comments, if you also have any ideas for tarot card readings that you'd like to potentially see in the future, because I want to hear from everyone in the Crow Coven what they'd like to see, because I have tons in my backlog, but I also wanted to see if there's anything in particular that you would want to hear from this reading. Or from this channel, rather. My apologies. I'm, <laughs> I'm losing my mind talking for 40 minutes. But anyway, thank you guys for getting to the end of your reading. And I will see you guys in the next video. Hello, group number four, and welcome to your reading all about your love story in 2024. So before we get started, I quickly wanted to just let you know, obviously, thank you guys so much for watching this video, but also this would be a great time for you to grab any snacks or anything to hydrate you like water or tea because it will be a longer reading. And also, if you need to, feel free to pull out your notes app on your phone or to get a writing utensil and some paper so you can write down some messages so you don't have to come back to the reading and be like, wait, what did Nick say? <laughs> What's going on? So with all that being said, let's head into your reading. You guys chose the Kawaii Tarot along with the Sunstone. And the Sunstone is really a like super joyful stone. It is very indicative of being able to lift people's spirits, especially when they have been having like a hard time, especially if you're somewhere right now where it is winter and it's very, very cold. Um, this can help you during that time as well. And it can also really help to encourage optimism and being enthusiastic about things in your life. So let's go ahead and get started in your reading. Please, Spirit, can we pull? Apparently, this, this card wants to come out. <laughs> so we're seeing the lovers in reverse. Um, can we get some messages for group four? That was a very obvious and direct message for you to throw out at us. So thank you. Um, can we get a few more cards for group four? We have the Eight of Swords in the reverse position. I'd like two more, Spirit. The Two of Swords. And one more to go. The Knight of Cups. All right. 
So here is my overall thoughts on this. Firstly, I want to talk a little bit about the lovers. So this is going to be different sort of just depending on what your current status is. Um, if you are single, um, the lovers reverse can talk about a need for you to focus on yourself. There may be some sort of need for self-care and self-love and protection during this time that is having you maybe be a little bit more wary about love than you normally would be. Um, perhaps you have been through like a breakup in the past and you are starting to like open up a little bit. You're like, you know what? I really want to see like what I can have. And maybe that's why you were curious and you clicked on this video and you're going at it from a sense of like, you're interested in the potential of new love, but like you don't want to like jump in. So it's like when you dip your toe in the water at the pool to see how cold it is instead of just doing a cannonball off the deep end kind of thing. So it's one of those vibes where... Um, you just feel a little hesitant and that's nothing to knock you because of course we don't want to put ourselves out there and have all this love for another person that doesn't meet us in the same way. But if you're someone who is in a relationship or perhaps this is more talking about a friendship that you're going through, it gives off this feeling of you guys seem to be out of balance with one another. So there's something going on where your values are not as aligned with one another as they used to be. And because of this, it's starting to kind of cause this um, sense of disharmony in the makeup of you guys' friendship, relationship, whatever it is. So take that as it is, but just know that I feel like there's something that needs a little bit of work before it can be settled and brought to an upright position. Because all of our cards here we're seeing are reversed, so it does seem like there's a lot on your mind, especially with all the swords that we're seeing here. There's a lot that's weighing on your conscious and you're kind of overthinking, which if you're a Gemini, you um, would know that <laughs> we are mega overthinkers, but the Gemini zodiac sign is represented by the lovers. So it could be something that you are used to and I am very much used to overthinking, especially when it comes to um, situations regarding love. So I totally understand. But going forward, we're seeing in this Eight of Swords reverse that you are open to this new perspective in life. So there's a possibility of maybe someone has recently confessed to you or there's a new friendship that has formed and you're starting to be like, you know what? Like, what if we dated though? Kind of thing. It it gives me almost this feeling like you're kind of interested in trying this new uh, avenue and you're trying to open yourself up to it. You're also allowing yourself to release things from your past. So again, if you're someone who went through a really bad breakup and you're trying to dip your toes back into the dating scene. Um, this is you being able to release what happened in the past at least enough to start opening yourself up to another person. So um, to go on kind of a more like like dramatic example, I guess, is perhaps you were in a relationship where the other person was unfaithful to you and that really knocked your self-confidence and it really just like deeply hurt you. And you broke up because of it and now you're sitting there being like well like if i do this again like i i can't go through another person doing this sort of thing to me and you're finally you're finally getting to that point where you're just like you know what i have to one day open myself up again to another person i'm just not sure and i think it's fine again to protect yourself and i want everyone to protect themselves when it comes to like love and again opening yourself up to another person because it can be very hard to tell if they have ulterior motives and if they're doing things just to like make you happy or in, in the way of like in the like not because uh 
not because they want to make you happy, but because they want to use that happiness against you later kind of thing. So just be very careful, but also know that it seems like you're okay you're becoming more open to trying something new. However, with the Two of Swords reversed, you're kind of in this point of indecision. You're just not sure where you want to go and who you want to explore this avenue with because I'm getting this feeling that you're just like really confused right now because there's too much information that you have to process and you're not sure like what what you want to do so this could possibly be that maybe two people expressed interest in you and you're trying to decide between two people or maybe you're currently with someone who has been unfaithful before but you're like I could find opportunity elsewhere but I just don't know what to do or maybe you are like single as hell and you're like do I stay single or do I go with a person that like shows the first sign of interest in me because I'm lonely and I want to be with somebody you know it can be anything but I feel like there's something going on especially probably in the earlier part of the year where someone is going to either approach you or you're gonna get the vibe from somebody that there is some like level of interest and you're going to kind of not spiral, but you're going to be like, well, what do I do? <laughs> what do I do? How do I, how do I go through this? And you're just not hundred percent sure. And I do want you to be careful because we're seeing in the Knight of Cups here, there's this potential that someone could be very, I don't know, normally upright. This card is like your stereotypical, like knight in shining armor. Like they're there to like wine and dine you they are there to turn on the charm and really be super super romantic but when it's in reverse it normally talks about someone who is very jealous and someone who really can't handle the fact that like that either they're not getting what they want or like they had unrealistic expectations going on Maybe somebody is coming to you and they seem unrealistic because they're like, they seem so perfect for you. And you're like, what's going on? What's happening kind of thing. And it is because they have ulter ulterior motives. Or this can indicate someone who is very moody and upset. So again, to cover all our bases, this could be indicative of someone else. Or this could be you. It could be you feeling jealous and moody about other people being in relationships that seem happy and healthy. And you're like, why not me? Like kind of vibes. But for the most part, I'm really getting the idea of this possibly being someone around you who is seemingly jealous of something that's going on. So if you're with somebody and you're like planning on, you like leave them and then they're jealous and pissed off about that kind of thing, this could be a warning of that just as an example. But I'm getting this feeling like there's something happening that you're going to make a decision on that someone is going to be upset about. So let's go ahead and pull a few more cards because I would love to know what the situation is. What is going on <laughs> with group four? Can we get more insight into their love reading? This card just like flew out. Yeah, the th Ooh, okay. The three of cups reversed. <laughs> I used it as an example, but the Three of Cups reversed is like, is the cheating card. It's like there's an affair that's going on, um, or there had been. There's also this card indicates three is a crowd, so you could unfortunately be in like a love triangle sort of situation, and maybe that's why that there's hurt emotions. Is there's something happening that is really weighing on people's emotions. Yeah, the fact that this card came out, though, with the, like, cheating implications kind of has me stressed out. <laughs> I obviously hope you haven't gone through that because it's such a painful thing to have to deal with and so hard to heal from. But it could just be more of an indicator that this, like, message is, like, super, like, for you and you needed to, you needed to, like, hear this. Especially if you're, like, with the person still. Like, if you... Are with someone who has been unfaithful to you like not to be a jerk but like get rid of them <laughs> 
I just feel like you are, whoever you are, you are worth more than needing to remain with somebody who does not want to love and respect you. Let's go, go ahead and pull a few more cards, Spirit. Do you have any more deep cuts you want to give to group four? You weren't like this mean to other cards or other decks, but uh, <laughs> I keep saying the wrong thing. Other groups, but <laughs> deep cuts, guys. We're seeing intemperance is there is this time or ability for you to gain balance within yourself and your life. Temperance is indicative of um, Sagittarius as the zodiac sign. So it's possible that you or someone around you is a Sagittarius or you have to take on these uh, Sagittarius traits. So being more independent, allowing yourself to, uh, to sort of take on this sort of protecting yourself versus like letting other people get at you kind of personality and doing things that make you feel good instead of allowing people to walk all over you. Um, with temperance though, this talks about, again, balance, um, patience in particular, having patience to know that things are coming and things are changing for you. Um, and slipping into your highest sense of purpose um, and like meaning in life. So there's some decision I think you're going to be making that's going to take you toward your higher purpose. I think it's a dramatic one from the rest of the cards that we're seeing around it. The fact that Temperance is the first card that we're seeing coming out as upright really gives me this feeling that you have something that is out of balance, kind of like how we saw it in Lovers Reversed, where this talks about literally like not being aligned with one another and um, having like a misalignment of you guys' values. We're seeing here in Temperance that there is a need for change and a status quo shift to where you do become more balanced within yourself. Can we pull one more card, please, Spirit? This deck right now is just really strong. <laughs> it's a very clear-cut message. With the Seven of Swords, this is us talking about you needing to be able to um see past everyone's like lies cuz this card here is about some sort of betrayal someone trying to get away with someone and someone acting in a sneaky way so my apologies if you are finding out about your partner being unfaithful because of this reading or if you start getting it in your head that they are feeling unfaithful uh because it's really weird that it's on both sides. I mentioned it earlier. It just feels sneaky. The fact that you're going to feel very confused and you're going to have this information overload kind of thing and someone's being moody or jealous. There's a lot going on here. So for some of you, I'm really hoping that it's not, but I'm getting some clear-cut signs that there's something going on that you have to kind of look into further in your current relationship. If this is, if you're like, I'm single as hell, what is happening? Just be careful of those that are around you. Don't get pulled in by someone who is like a player who is like pretending to be one thing and they're telling you that they're like only with you and everything's good, everything's great. But like behind the scenes, they're actually seeing other people and they're lying about it, you know, like that kind of vibe. Um, for those of you where this is like friendship situation, it kind of gives me this feeling like people are trying to keep you down and keep you from being your authentic self and being able to feel secure within yourself because they're insecure, they're jealous and moody because of like whatever it is that you have that they don't kind of thing. And because of this, they're orchestrating things against you that are knocking you down even further. I know this doesn't seem positive, but what I like to always say when we come to readings like this that are brutally honest is that tarot is all just about advice. It's here to help guide you 
and give you kind of a heads up when things are going on in your life that are less than desirable. And just know that you, of course, have free will. So if you ever want to change this outcome and you want to become something you want to be able to um, live your life in a way where you have goodness coming to you. This is kind of here to help. And also you have the ability to, to change whatever is going on in your life. But overall, I do see whatever decision you make is going to serve you, especially with this temperance. And really focus on yourself. Don't allow other people to get at you. And I do see this as positive because it shows me that you're willing to fight for yourself and you're willing to hold yourself up to this like higher standard where you're not going to like let other people take advantage of you. And you're like, you know what? No, I'm putting my foot down. Maybe this has happened before and you're afraid of it happening again kind of thing. So you are not going to like let it happen instead of, of course, just sort of going into that... Uh, cyclical pattern of letting this happen again and I think you're going to be more powerful after this. I don't have any <laughs> ability to go further into the reading because this feels so personal. This feels so like directed at like a small amount of people that this may be something that if you want more information you may need to either if you do tarot readings do one for yourself about this or if you have a friend who does tarot readings, or if you have a favorite reader who has like their readings open, maybe look into possibly contacting them to get further information to kind of work your way throughout this, just because this is so strongly and intensely pointed <laughs> that I think that you could benefit from further things. There's also other resources such as if you can't pay for a reader, um, you could even look back on my own channel and there could be another uh, reading that is calling towards you, like maybe a yes or no, pick a card or something that has to do with love that you could look into and see if you can get any other further messages from that as well, just because this feels, again, it feels so, so pointed. So let's go ahead and get you a couple more cards. I'm going to go ahead and pull two of these for you. See if we can get any further messages for group four. The, I pulled two in a row, so let's go ahead and read both of them. So the first one we are seeing is the sheep and blackberry, and it says devotion. So I get this feeling... I keep getting this feeling like you are someone who is like so connected with somebody and also like you are so devoted to the idea of love like how we're seeing with like the lovers was right there you feel very much like someone who wants to pursue love in whatever form that looks like to you so whether that's romantic romantic or like platonic kind of thing i feel like you want someone obviously we all do but we want someone who's devoted for us and to us and this is completely opposite from this Three of Cups, from the potential of someone being in an affair um, and devotion. I think that's one of the biggest things that you really value when it comes to a relationship. So if you are not being treated and respected in the way that this card is wanting you and showing you that you, you need, you need to rethink what's going on here. And next we have the Kaiman and Poppy, and it says dreams. So yes, listening to your dreams, if you have been having, like, say you've been having nightmares about potentially your partner um, <laughs> doing things, or maybe you're dreaming yourself with, like, another person, and you've, you're sitting there waking up being like, I feel really bad, like, I keep having these weird dreams with being with other people it could be indicative that like you aren't satisfied where you're at because there's all this messiness going on and you need to point yourself in a different direction so start paying attention to these dreams um, and see what messages you can get from them as well you can very easily google like um, just certain points in your dream like if you're seeing like certain animals or if you are it's like the same sort of like certain situation that's going on kind of thing you can kind of 
figure it out by like typing it in and just being like, what does it mean if this keeps happening in my dream or something like that? So you can get further information. I'm also going to pull from this deck here and I'm going to in tandem use the guidebook because I actually just received this deck recently. So I'm still kind of getting to know this deck and learn the messages. So let's go ahead and pull a couple of cards for group four. The first one we're seeing is Celestite and it says, soothe your soul. Then one more piece spirit. Is Rose Quartz. Uh, it says open up your heart. Yes. Again, getting that feeling of you like needing to open yourself up from the potential of someone having like cheated on you maybe in the past or if you are currently going through that is I'm getting this feeling of needing to open yourself up to another person outside of what you're going through. But let's start with the Celestite first, and then we'll go to Rose Quartz. Um, so for Celestite, it says, Soothe your soul. Trust that things happen in life for a reason. It's natural to worry about the unknown, but try tapping into hope instead. Most of the time, the things you worry about don't actually end up happening, and when you look back, you realize how much time and energy was wasted stressing over something you had little control over. Of course, take action when you believe you can help or change the outcome of a situation. If not, try to replace any anxiety or tension with more positive thoughts. Soothe your mind, body, and spirit with the comforting notion that it will all be okay in the end. The universe unfolds as it should. And the crystal action says, I trust that all will be well. So this can be a message for if you have been cheated on in the past and you're currently in a relationship and you're starting to freak out because like there's similar signs and you're wondering if it's happening you wonder if that temptation is there you're like this close to like going through their phone levels of paranoia it could be that you are reading these signs wrong and instead it needs to be a conversation with the person that you're with that is you needing to be reassured so if they know about your past and what you've been through or even if they don't you have to be forward with them and let them know that you're still honestly like traumatized by what happened in your past and that you need certain things to be done in order for you to feel more at ease so it we did talk briefly about the swords being your mental state so maybe you could possibly be like just so paranoid and thinking like the worst of the situation and you are having like anxiety freakouts and you're losing it kind of thing but instead of opening up and talking to the person that you're with you're starting to build up this narrative in your head that is separate from reality and what is actually happening and maybe even here with devotion, perhaps this person actually is devoted to you, but you keep building this up in your head that you're like ready to go off on them and it ends up not being that whatsoever. So that kind of flips a lot of this on its head. I didn't even think about that because I was so taken aback by how many things were pointed towards something, but maybe that's what it feels like to you. Like maybe your anxiety and the way that you deal with things immediately goes to like worst case scenario like this is of course what's happening and it can't be any other answer and maybe that's why I felt so pulled to read it in such a like almost biased way is because it's that feeling of being like this is the only answer oh my god I have to like of course this is what's going on but looking at it from a different perspective especially if the person that you're currently with is someone who has never done anything to make you think otherwise. That is where there can be that previous baggage, that previous trauma that can be 
hurting you and holding you back from being able to see things. And I, of course, I want to say this again, I completely understand. I have been there where I have been cheated on and this is like how I see things too because I have been to that point where like I'm going to jump to conclusions and everything. So don't see it as a negative within yourself. Just recognize it as pain that you're still healing through and you just need a little bit more reassurance. So this could be a discussion with your partner or a discussion, especially with potential and new partners, is letting them know, hey, this happened to me. I have to have more comfort. I have to have you checking in more. I need you to like really, really show that you care and do X, Y, Z for me to feel okay while also not seeming like you are like super controlling. So like not being the person who's like, you're not allowed to have anybody in your phone that isn't me like kind of thing, or you're not allowed to hang out with anybody that isn't me. Like that is too far, but having those healthy boundaries put in place so then they can meet those expectations are going to get you guys a lot farther in your relationship than you just never opening up to them. So that was like beautiful. I'm so glad that we were able to pull this card so we can kind of get that like opposite side because you could be panicking for no reason. You could be like seeing most of this reading and being like, that's it. I'm going to, I'm going to grab their phone. I'm going to find it out. And then you come to realize that they've been nothing but actually devoted to you so the best course of action is going to be for you to if you're feeling this way is to sit down and have a conversation with your current partner or know that this is a conversation you're going to have to have with a new partner just so you can be settled next we have with rose cords it says open up your heart and it says Remember your first love. It should be you. Embrace radical, unconditional self-love. This will help guide you to a place of understanding, patience, and joy, which you can then share with others. By embracing unconditional love for yourself, you open your heart to receiving the kind of love you need and deserve from others. So go ahead. Fall head over heels in love with yourself. Only then you will be able to express that level of true love with that special someone. And the affirmation says, I am love. And for me, I always like to point out to people whenever I see the rose quartz on here is that um, I'm not somebody who believes in you have to like love yourself first or else you can never love another person or you can't love them as like deeply as you say that you do kind of thing if you're somebody who struggles with self-confidence but there is something to be said about you having that self-love and self-worth for yourself to pull yourself out of these situations if that's what you're currently going through because there are plenty of times we've heard it all before where someone's in a relationship with somebody they cheat on them uh, they try to break up, but then the other person's like, I'm sorry, like, she didn't mean anything, he didn't mean anything, and then you guys get back together, and then the cycle continues, and normally that person who was cheated on, they end up having pretty low self-esteem from that point on, or even from previously, and that cycle just continues. So being able to have that self-love and the self-worth to stand up and go, you know what? I'm not going to be with somebody who doesn't respect me, who isn't devoted to me in the way that I'm devoted to them, and you're able to break away from it. So no matter what your situation is that you're going on, if this is just your anxiety and paranoia that's telling you something's happening, or if this is something that you're currently going through or went through in the past, you just have to keep holding yourself to that standard of you caring so deeply about yourself that you don't want this to happen again. So you put in those precautions to make sure that you're okay is the biggest message I want to get to you for that rose quartz. Lastly, I'm going to pull one of these oracle cards for any last messages for group four. Please spirit can get one card. Ah, oh, yes. So I love this card here. This is Trish Una and it says honesty with yourself. So really, really digging deep and being true with yourself. Not, um, don't try to hide from whatever trauma or fear that you went through and just pretend like, oh, if I just ignore it, you know, it's going to go away kind of thing. 
and being honest with yourself in the sense of like what you actually want out of life um because if you just sit there and you're like well all of this is happening to me because like I deserve it or like whatever kind of situation it is if you dig deep and you are sitting there going like of course I don't deserve this like I'm worthy of love too like why <laughs> why the heck is this happening kind of thing, you will gain that power to kind of stand up for yourself. Um, you being almost like your own little like cheerleader is kind of the vibes I get from this card is you being able to really talk yourself up is a big thing, especially with this character. They have that as sort of like their own like superpower kind of thing is they're able to really instill this sense of um, truth and self-love and being honest within themselves and show other people that as well. Lastly, I am going to take this Astro Dice and I'm going to roll this a couple of times for us to pull any zodiac signs that could be important during this time, perhaps yourself or someone else who is involved in the situation zodiac sign. The first one we're seeing coming out is a Capricorn. Next, we have Virgo coming out. And lastly, we are seeing Gemini. Kind of like how I talked about before, that you could be a Gemini, perhaps, or also with the lovers being indicative of Gemini. The other thing I would say, too, is um, Gemini is the sign of communication. So really keeping in mind your need and your power when it comes to communicating with people. So again, if this is something where you're building this up in your head, but a good discussion would help you actually resolve a few things, that is the path that you need to make sure that you are taking for yourself. So thank you guys so much for getting to the end of this reading. I know it's a lot to process and a lot to go through, but just know that I am here for you guys and I do believe that you have the power to push through. Just make sure that you are protecting yourself and you're doing everything that you need to do in order to have that better outcome for yourself. Lastly, if you did like the video, remember to like it and also leave a comment with some form of flower emoji because we're seeing these flowers here surrounding you. Um, and just to let myself and others know that you did get to the end of this reading. And also, if you feel safe enough to do so, feel free to kind of let me in on your story if this really connected with you, if this sort of hit home with you, maybe you've been through some sort of um, situation where a partner was unfaithful just so we can give you support in the comments as well so thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in our next video